JavaScript. It's probably one of the most popular programming languages on the web right now. What originally started out as a way to save time and bandwidth to validate web forms now powers the biggest time wasters, I mean the greatest websites on the web. Sites like Facebook, Netflix, Uber, and Facebook, wait, I just said that. Needless to say, more than 98% of websites on the web use JavaScript, but what's that have to do with making a game? Well, recently I was working on a secret new website for my cute Metroidvania Dewdrop Dynasty, which you can wishlist on Steam, and this got me thinking, how hard is it to make a game in JavaScript? So that's what we're gonna do. So I started off by looking for an easy JavaScript framework for me to use. I saw some things like Phaser and Babylon JS, but nah, this is a little too commonplace for me. I wanted to use something a little bit more obscure. And that's when I found Kaboom.js. When I heard the Earthbound music in this shooter demo, and after seeing this weird green bean guy burping, I knew I was sold. So I installed Kaboom.js, and by install, I mean I went to some random video, I found the minified JavaScript, I slapped it in a folder, and then I ran VS Code. But honestly, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Really what we should be focusing on is what we're making. What is this game we're making in the first place? And strangely enough, I found a combination that is so powerful between game genre and theming that I don't think you're ready for. Google Dinosaur Game meets Capybaras. So that's my theme. So I hopped over into Affinity Designer and started drafting out what a Capybara design could look like. Now, if you followed this channel for a while now, you'll know that I love cute games. And so it's a no brainer that I've been wanting to make a Capybara game for a long time. And making an Endless Runner game just made sense because I don't know, do Capybaras run a lot? I'm sure they do. Anywho, I created this little Capybara. He's, he's so cute. I love him. I'm gonna name him Harold. And now we can jump back into Kaboom and try to do the most difficult thing any man has ever dreamed of. And that's print hello world. Turns out it's incredibly easy. After that, I try to familiarize myself with Kaboom.js and check out their movement tutorial. That way we can make this capybara free to walk around and it works. Now, if we're gonna make an endless runner style game, we need to add gravity. So we did, but okay, that's, that's, a, that's a little weak. The only thing weaker than that jump is the fact that I continue to get errors all through this process. And at first I didn't know how to debug them until I realized you had to inspect the web page and it showed you the errors there. So cool. Next, it was time for us to make hazards because we wouldn't have a game without hazards and Harold needs something to jump over. So I quickly made a script that just spawns in the objects and then once they go off the screen, it just deletes them and then it spawns in more objects. Come on, Harold, you can make this jump. Mm. After that, I did a double whammy and I worked on the scoring system and a game over screen. So you collect these points as time progresses and when you hit an object, you go to a game over screen and it shows you your points. They're really hard to see, but trust me, they're there. They're, they're, they're there. After this, I played around with the spacing and the visual and the size of everything and the jump strength just so that it felt better. Harold's going to finally jump over objects and it, we actually have more of a playable game here. I did jump back into Affinity and created the rest of the hazards, the background, the floor, and just making the game feel more cohesive. My thought is that it's inside of like a house or a kitchen bathroom area. I don't know. And you got some oranges. You got some, you got a capybara taking a bath. You have another capybara and you have boxes of oranges. I don't, I don't know what was up with the oranges. So I exported the files and put them in the game. But you'll notice that we're just, we're just only getting oranges and that's too much. So I made sure to load in the rest of the sprites and randomize which ones would spawn in. So now we're actually starting to get a game. After that, I kind of adjusted the window size. I changed the background color and I worked on these floors, which I'm not going to talk about because they took forever to make and I'm a little embarrassed by it. Next, I added these windows that have a slight parallax scrolling. They work perfectly. I love it. And it was at this point I finally decided to work on the, the final animations for the capybaras. I'm not going to lie, I don't normally animate in my vector style, so it was a little weird, but I'm pretty happy with the results. Oh yeah, and for some reason I like was experimenting with increasing the speed as the game went on. Yeah, I don't know. This feels a little cursed for me. Now that the gameplay was mostly finished, it was time to do all the fun polishing stuff like creating a menu. So I jumped back into Affinity for a third time and I started working on a title screen. And due to the nature of this game, I decided to call it Hoppy Barra. Also ig ignore this. That just just forget about this clip. It was at this point I realized that you could actually just import fonts. I thought I was gonna have to slice the image and put it in, but no, turns out you can just import it. So I did, and I add it to the menu. So whenever your score is saved, it actually looks nice on the menu. Lastly, I add some sound effects, threw them in Audacity and poured them into the game. And it was actually incredibly easy to do. I found this amazingly dreamy track that just fits the game really well. And I added that in as well. And that's Hoppy Barra, that's the game. At first going into this challenge, I had no idea how hard it was going to be, but now I understand why people love JavaScript so much. It's just incredibly easy to use and it's fun. I just had a good time and I mean, who wouldn't make in a capybara game? Now, if you want to get into programming and you don't know where to start, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. 
Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational advanced math to programming, AI, neural networks, and more, with new lessons being added each month. And their interactive lessons have been proven to be six times more effective than passive learning, like just watching random lecture videos. Being able to see what you're learning is really important for engaging with concepts. And Brilliant storytelling makes abstract ideas actually relatable. One course I really like is Computer Science Fundamentals. It basically is Programmers 101. It helps with decision making, writing writing programs and algorithms. It's fantastic and I highly recommend it. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, there is a 30-day free trial. All you have to do is visit brilliant.org slash goodgifts or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And I just want to say thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel and my game dev journey.